This is the Larry Fedorik Show with Joe Cahill on News Talk 610 CKTV. 19 after 5 o'clock. Welcome back. Uh, so there is this movement afoot, not necessarily a new movement, but it's a movement nonetheless. And there is a group out of Oshawa called Stop 100, and uh, they want to petition the provincial government to increase the speeds on our highways. The 400 series, the Queenie, from 100 to 120 on all metropolitan stretches of the highway and up to 130 kilometers uh, on uh, areas outside of metropolitan areas and say on the on the highway 407 now i was trying to get a hold of chris who is with the stop 100 group he's on holidays but one of their satellite outfits is called senses bc and joining me on the line uh is uh ian toodle hi ian how are you today very well, thanks, Joe. So, uh, did, did I get this straight? And I'm thinking about BC. You guys really don't have the sort of uh, highway infrastructure that we have here in Ontario. No, so- we don't. Actually, we were we were born about uh, 17, 18 years ago when they introduced photo radar in BC, and uh, we so we've been quite active in um, uh, in all things to do with uh, speed enforcement ever since uh, photo radar was canned in 2001 here in BC. But we do have a highway infrastructure here. Uh, we have a, a beautiful highway that runs from, uh, you know, Vancouver to the interior of BC called the Coquihalla Highway, and uh, it's posted at 110 kilometers an hour, which is 10k higher than your uh, uh, super highways are. <laughs> and uh, you know, it, it, it's a limit that is about uh, anywhere from 20 to 30 kilometers an hour slower than what uh, most drivers want to travel it at. Yeah, and I know when I'm driving on the highway, I'm doing 120 minimum, 110, but 120 usually. That's my, my cruising speed, yeah. unless unless I run into traffic. Is, is that the median, uh, 120 pretty much? Well, you know, it depends on the highway. Uh, it depends on a number of different circumstances. Um, you know, the condition of the road, uh, design of the road, uh, on-ramps, off-ramps, paved median, non-paved medium, number of lanes, time of day, weather condition, vehicle speed, but... Long story short, generally in most countries around the world where uh, speed limits have been set at 120 or 130, that's generally what people want to drive on a properly designed highway. And you've got some great highways in Ontario. I lived in Toronto for a number of years, and I'm quite familiar with the 400 series of highways. Uh, They have some of the lowest uh, fatality rates in North America on those roads, and uh, they don't represent, uh, uh, you know, the largest number of crashes and fatalities and so on. And yet the, the focus always, whenever we talk about uh, enforcement, the focus always seems to be on speed. Mm-hmm. And, and we, we out in B.C., but also your, your group in Ontario, which is uh, stop100.ca, which is run by Chris Klimek, these, these people rightfully are demanding that the roads be set at, uh, at a limit that, that doesn't make lawbreakers out of the reasonable majority, the safe majority of drivers. So why are we still stuck at 100? I, was it all got to do with the uh, the energy crisis? That was uh, over, what, 30 years ago? Well, actually, the, it, interestingly, you mentioned that because that is the history behind it. That's when things started to get stupid. The, uh, the U.S. government uh, recognized an, an energy crisis and thought it'd be a good idea to slow everybody down so less fuel was consumed. Mm-hmm. And uh, once that happened, of course... Uh, the uh, the enforcement industry, uh, which included the insurance companies, started to realize that there was a big cash cow to be had there. So ah. everybody had their fingers in the cookie jar, <laughs> and it was very difficult to see that limit um, or that edict uh, taken away once the uh, once the problem with uh, the energy crisis went away. So for a number of years, the insurance lobby in the U.S. Uh, went to Congress year after year and. and tried to put the brakes on the lifting of the 55-mile-an-hour mandate in the U.S. It was finally lifted in 1996, uh, despite their shrill cries that all hell would break loose after (laughs) they did that. And now, slowly but surely, uh, the U.S. states are following uh, the lead of a number of European countries, and they're raising the limits to speeds that make sense. Are you suggesting there is a conspiracy going on here, uh, Ian? Well, there's, a, you know, I, I'm, I find it hard to believe conspiracy theories. Usually it's a collection of well-meaning, <laughs> uh, you know, individuals that, uh, you know, they've all got their reasons for doing these things. But, you know, the reality is that all drivers uh, drive, you know, they vote with their right foot, 
and you just have to uh, get in your car and get on the 400 series of highways or stand by the side of the road to see what it is that's going on. Now, in, in, in terms of uh, Ontario driving, I think it's kind of generally understood that if you're doing like anywhere 100 to 120, the copper really isn't going to give you a hard time as long as you're not being an idiot. Uh, cops will allow you to do up to 120 without uh, actually giving you a ticket. Sure. It's kind of the uh, road safety equivalent of the U.S. military's don't ask, don't tell. (laughs) I mean, um, you know, that's true. Uh, Generally, they don't. But it turns our speed enforcement industry into an arbitrary exercise. I mean, what we have in B.C. is we have these periods of detente, uh, you know, where everybody thinks they can get away with something, and then all of a sudden they get clobbered, you know, when they go on their little... um, you know, they go on their little exercises where they decide they're going to get tough on people. Mm-hmm. I and have no problem with raising it to 120, but if you're caught doing 121, you get a ticket. Well, you can't do it that way because, you know, there are the reason that we have uh, enforcement tolerances is that there are, uh, you know, there is room for error. I mean, not everybody's spinometer is, is accurate to within 1%. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are reasons why people may, ne- may need to creep over a speed limit. I mean, you, you can't be that strict about it. I mean, you can certainly be strict to, uh, uh, you know, say within 5 or 10% of the, uh, you know, of the, of the limit. But... Um, you know, what, what's happening is that there is a, a great deal of fuss made by some of the law enforcement agencies in places where they do raise the speed limits, where they say just what you just said, we're going to be really, really tough. Mm-hmm. But generally what they find when they raise speed limits to the upper end of safe travel speed is that there aren't a lot of lawbreakers. I mean, most, most people are adhering to the speed limit, so the necessity of, of being so uh, uh, visible on the highways tends to go away. I know over in Europe, uh, well, I guess they have the Autobahn. You can go as fast as you want there. Generally, what is the average speed limit over in Europe? Well, uh, the Autobahn actually is, th- there There are Autobahns, and they're not all unlimited. There are many roadways in, in Germany that are that do have strict posted limits. Okay. And then there are some that are unlimited. And that actually, uh, unfortunately, they're talking about taking away some of those, uh, uh, some of those roads. The other European countries where there are, uh, posted limits. Uh, generally, they're anywhere from 120 to 130, one, in some cases 135 kilometers an hour. And generally, that's what people want to drive at. They want to drive somewhere one, around 130. And I've never been to Germany myself, but mm-hmm. uh, Chris Klimek has. And he tells me that it, if you're on the Autobahn, we have unlimited limits, or sorry, you don't have limits. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, even though there are people driving at extreme speeds, there are also an awful lot of people driving at around 130, 140, right. because that's generally where people want to drive exactly. on a good road. Yeah. So in terms of this petition at stop100.ca, again, you guys are just a bunch of crazy people saying, ah, we just want to drive fast. You have, uh, it's, it's a very rational uh, explanations and reasonings behind this. Well, and also there are links to other uh so-called legitimate uh, departments, government agencies, so and so on, like Kansas Department of Transport. They have, uh, you know, there's links there where you can go there and you can see how they've set their limits. They've set their limits using the methodology that we're describing. So it's not a bunch of wingnuts saying, <laughs> you know, let's just go out and speed. I might have my uh, fantasies about what speed I might like to drive on roads, but we're saying let's just make, uh, you know, the reasonable actions of the reasonable majority of drivers legal. I know our speed limit on the 400 uh, series were was 70 miles an hour 40 years ago, and now right. we're down to 60, right? Right, and now we have better cars, better tires, yeah. better brakes. Crazy, crazy. Kinds, yeah. yeah. So the website is stop100.ca. You can also like you on Facebook to show support as well. Yes, that's right. Ian, I appreciate your time this afternoon. Happy motoring. Thanks very much, Joe. All right, it's uh, 27 after 5 o'clock. Uh, do you have a problem uh, with uh, going 130? Are you happy with 100? Or do you think it's all one big conspiracy? Yeah, it's a government insurance business and all of that. Yeah, they just want to they want to keep their thumbs on us. Love to hear what you think. 688-2582-1877-610 CKTB pound 610. Or you can text me at 61010. We'll take a break. News on the way, and we shall return for the final half hour of fun. News Talk 610 CKTB. Yeah.